I really like the rawness. You notice the concrete throughout. It's an absolutely incredible house. I think 21st century houses should be adapting to us and, and I think these days our lifestyles are all about wanting flexibility and this is why we tend to try and adapt our Victorian homes to sort of live around us but we're trying to do something where we try and make the homes that live around the people as well. <laughs> The site itself has a lot of very invisible geometries, uh, mostly to do with surrounding properties, neighbouring properties, distance from neighbouring windows, primary spaces or primary habitable spaces. So that sculpted the site, so the building then was split into a split section. So if you look, this is a central core to the building. So we've got a series of half landings, right from the um, lower ground floor up to this lower terrace level. You've got the half landing here, that's a study space. The split section actually really works. It provides a huge amount of accommodation on a very small and very restricted site. So if we come, come down, you start getting an idea of what, how the split levels start to work. The site itself is 175 square metres, the building itself is 175 square metres in plan, so there's a lot of building on a small site. And so, and you can see the spaces externally are quite tight, but the way in which the glass and the outside space work together, there's not, not a feeling of claustrophobia. That was very important to the client to actually have large expanses of glass, but not feel overlooked. So when you're down here, Despite the fact that there's a lot of properties around, you don't really feel that exposed. So here, the study space becomes the point at which everything, all movement through the house, um, happens. And also at the same time, you feel connected with the rest of the house. So if somebody's working away in the kitchen, you don't feel isolated. You've got two children's bedrooms here, one single and one double with a bathroom at the back. There's a toilet underneath this staircase. There is no wasted space anywhere inside the building. Master bedroom with ensuite bathroom upstairs. The sill heights were set at 430 millimetre off finished floor level, which give you um, a nice window seat, so you can imagine cushions along here and utilise it as a window seat to sit here and read a book in the afternoon for the sunset. is that you're constantly battling against the trades going, I don't know what to do here. They've seen every type of roof on a Victorian house and they've done it a, a, a thousand times. Whereas here, every single detail needs studying and thinking about. Everyone has to up their game. It just takes time, I think, contemporary architecture. It was never going to be an easy battle. And it's still not, you know, you still have to fight. I'm an architect, I like using section to uh, design, but I, I think the, the, the way the section's been handled is very, very good, and that, that's the key thing, I think, that helps. You can't give it a direct comparison to anything else, the different levels just just make it much more interesting. It, it, it's just amazing that, I mean, like, wherever you are in there, you, you do get this sort of sense that you're actually sort of connected with sort of like every single space in the building. I think it's a very, very clever way to design a building, particularly in London, where space is at a premium and hard, hard to come by. Inside, the, it's very gentle and soft. The concrete works very nicely with the wood, and it seems to be a very warm and well-loved family home. It's, it's just brilliant. It's a brilliant piece of architecture and a brilliant piece of sustainable design.